Hi everyone, I want to talk today about significant gambling losses, how to cope with them, how to react to them. It may well be that you've come to this video off the back of a significant gambling loss and as someone who has an experience of significant losses and has had, had and maintained a gambling addiction for many many years, I want to share my experiences, my summary of what has worked, what hasn't worked and also dabble a little bit into the psychology of losing. First and foremost, I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're keeping safe and I hope you're keeping sane. If you do need immediate help, if you're feeling in any way like self-harming, suicidal, or in need of immediate help, then there are numbers in the description of this video. So stop the video now and get proper help from professionals. But hopefully my experience and my losses over many, many years will help you to recover from this most recent gambling loss. Now, one of my most popular videos on this channel, if not my most popular, most viewed video, is from many years ago where I reacted to a number of people experiencing what can only be described as gambling rage. Now I'm sure you've seen these videos floating about YouTube, typically of people smashing up bookmakers, destroying fob tees, punching things, abusing people, shouting, screaming, and all the rest of it. If you have been a gambler for many years, if you consider yourself on any way on the gambling or problem gambling spectrum, then you would have almost certainly experienced similar emotions. You may not have acted on them in such an extreme way, but there is, you can in some way empathise and sympathise with the people in these videos, either because you've acted in a similar way yourself or because you have felt like that in times of extreme emotion, normally under the pressure of a large gambling loss. The first thing to consider is that we only generally see these behaviours amongst problem gamblers. When you see someone shouting and screaming in a bookmaker's throwing things and smashing up machines, these aren't the type of people who are having just a casual punt on a Saturday afternoon. These are people with a problem. In order to work out how we should best deal with losses, we need to look at the psychology behind this anger and how this can lay a foundation of how to recover and bounce back from a substantial gambling loss. Now, just to give full clarity and full openness, I'll explain the way I used to deal with gambling losses. And I'll come on to tell you why these were very bad ideas. Now, the first one was self-destruct mode, which would mean after a loss, I would just ensure I lost the rest of my money. I'm sure we've all done that. We've ended up in a losing spiral where we just think, right, I'm going to lose my money. Let's just get it done with. Okay, I don't even need to explain the problems and the problematic nature of that, uh, that response to a loss. I used to drink heavily, I used to eat ridiculous food, I used to stay up all night just drinking spirits, watching crap on telly. Again, I don't feel I need to explain why this is a particularly bad way of reacting to a bad loss, but I did it time after time after time because I didn't know what else to do. The other way I reacted, for example, if I'd lost a thousand pounds in a bookies or wherever, I would try and find a thousand pounds from elsewhere. This would often mean manipulating accounts, moving money from one bank account to another, taking out short-term loans, getting cash out on credit cards, borrowing from friends and family, or selling items to replace the money that I'd lost in the belief that that would help restore balance. That would help me to get over, both financially and psychologically, the loss I had just endured at the hands of gambling. And I'll explain shortly why that was a very, very flawed flawed way of coping with a loss. Like I say, when we see people gamble, we often see heights of emotions. We often see joy, which realistically is relief, and we see anger. When we experience anger as gamblers, in the very, very short term, i.e. in the here and now, we believe we are getting angry at whatever is causing us to lose. In my instance, that would have been with the machine that I was playing, for, for example, on a, a fob tee. You know, I, I would get angry that it wasn't paying out. I would get angry that everyone else seemed to be getting bonuses and I wasn't. I would be angry because it didn't seem to be playing to the you know, stated RTP or that I thought it was rigged or whatever. Okay. Other people might get angry because the, they get angry at the jockey of the horse that they've backed because they don't believe it's you know they're riding correctly or they're not whipping it enough. Sorry, I don't know very much about horse racing. Or they might get angry at a team selection from a, a football manager because they're first to score, you know, can't score because they've just been taken off the pitch. We get angry with what we believe has cost us our bet, has cost us our money, and that's in the here and now. But there's a reason that casual gamblers, people who have the odd punt, don't get angry in this way. 
When we express our anger during gambling, the anger is inherently internal. To simplify that, we're basically getting angry at ourselves. And this only generally comes to light post the gambling. Once all is said and done, we've taken our loss, we've walked out of that bookmakers, we've walked out of that casino, we've logged off the computer. That is when we realise that actually yeah, the anger is within ourselves. And the reason the anger is within ourselves cause, is because this will not have been the first time. This will not have been our first significant loss and previous significant losses, however we've chosen to cope with them then, will have almost certainly been met with a, well, I'm not doing that again. I'm never gambling again. I'm never gambling that much again. I'm going to set myself limits. I'm only going to have a casual bet on the weekends. And we have gone in the face of what we have told ourselves. We have flown in the face of our experience. And we have experienced harm to our finances and to our well-being and possibly caused other problems in the process, despite of ourselves. So we are angry that we are unable to listen to our own advice. And we I know that we are actually far smarter than our actions in this instance. So that is, I believe, the basis of our anger. So why did my great plan, my strategy of coping with losses by borrowing money, selling stuff, doing whatever to get the money back, why did that not work? Well, if we look just very quickly at a couple of other examples as to where we may experience unexpected or unplanned financial loss. Driving home from work one day, you go to put your car in gear and it crunches. You need a new you need a gearbox rebuild or a new clutch or something and that's going to cost you a thousand pounds. It's money you didn't plan to spend, it's money you didn't want to spend. You're going to get angry at the car for letting you down, for costing you this money that you could have put towards a holiday or something else, something far more you know, exciting. You go to the pub, you have your wallet out and someone steals your wallet off the table of the pub. You have a thousand pound in cash in there, note to self. Don't carry that much cash in you. It doesn't make you look like Bertie Big Bollocks. I used to do it. It just makes you look like a bit of an idiot waiting to be robbed. And eventually you'll be robbed. And you'll be angry at the person who's stolen your wallet. And quite rightly, you may have set yourself up as a mug, but it's still the person who stole your wallet's fault that you're now a £1,000 down. In both these instances, we may actually be able to mitigate this loss. In the first instance, we may have a warranty on our car that covers the £1,000 it costs to repair the gearbox. Therefore, we are back at status quo, and despite a little bit of inconvenience, all is good in the world. You know, we are back on parity. Maybe you have really good house insurance that covers the loss of your wallet, and you manage to get your money back. So apart from the bit of inconvenience of having to cancel some cards and all the rest of it, you're back on parity, and all is well in your head. So why doesn't this work for gambling? Well, if there was gambler's insurance, and you could get that £1,000 back after you lost it, that wouldn't put you back at parity. And the reason is, as I, as I alluded to before, the money is not the problem. Your psychology is the problem. If you've got that money back, you're only going to gamble it again anyway. But that's kind of an irrelevance. The, that mental harm, the what we perceive to be a financial issue, is an issue with ourselves. It's an inner turmoil. It's the fact that we can't stop despite the fact we know we should. And in some instances, we want to. So just simply getting the money back doesn't fix the root of the problem, which is why my strategy of just replacing the money always felt incredibly shallow, incredibly empty. And obviously that's aside from the fact that inevitably I'm borrowing it, probably paying interest on it or having to pay people back, and I'll go on and lose that money as well. So apart from the additional financial damage, it didn't redress the actual root cause of the problem, which was the addiction and the psychology behind the addiction. So what should you do? if you've just experienced a big loss, apart from talking to the people in the description of this video, Gamcare, break even, and if it's a very immediate problem and you're considering any kind of self-harm, then get onto the Samaritans because they are amazing. Well, realistically, and it pains me to say this, there is only one thing you can do after a big loss, and that is nothing. You have to accept that loss. That money will not come back. Even if you can replenish it, the money you have actually lost will not come back. And any uh, you know, any action you take, as I used to, to get that money back will inevitably cause more harm than good. And this is certainly, certainly the case if you decide you're going to try and win it back. The old, you know, the old paradox, which I was guilty of, and I'm sure many others are, of using the very thing that got you 
into the situation in the first place to try and get you out of it. And that's only going to make matters a whole lot worse. Yes, you'll be angry, but you have to understand that anger is with yourself. And in time, you will have to forgive yourself. And that is the only way to deal with a substantial loss. I have spoken previously that there are actually positive things that you can do off the back of a big loss. If this really has triggered you to want to stop gambling for good, harness this negative energy you have, harness this motivation you have, and put some practical blocks in place. Use it as an opportunity to help prevent this situation from occurring again in the future. Maybe use it as an excuse to finally talk to your nearest and dearest about your problem. It may be that they don't initially understand, but particularly if you're in a relationship, it is important they know, and in time, they could actually become the best keys to your recovery. So if you are coming to this video off the back of a big loss, okay, don't try and actively fix the financial problem, because even if you do, you haven't actually fixed the underlying root cause of the problem, and in reality, you're likely to make things far, far worse. You can use this as a positive kickoff to do something to prevent this from occurring in the future. But in the meantime, the best thing to do is to relax. Don't react to the loss. In time, you will forgive yourself. In time, the money will come back. Gambling is not a financial problem. It causes financial problems, but it's not a financial problem in and of itself. Once you've forgiven yourself, move on and hopefully you can work towards recovery and you can work towards what I promise you will be a far, far better life. Until then, more than ever, stay safe, stay sane, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.